Redneck Ninja. Into the dark again, my friends. As I said in a recent post, I've switched careers in the past year or so. I'm now working as an armed security officer for a sizable medical center about 30 minutes from where I live. Needless to say, we get a lot of stuff. I'll put it this way, I'm on a first name basis with all of the local police department personnel that work my shift, because we work together more than we work separately. One cloudy afternoon this past spring, all was well in the ER, where we spent most of our time. Psych patients were behaving, there were no rowdy intoxicated patients, visitors were all nicely following the COVID policies in place, and things couldn't have been better. Then, the radio keyed up. Dispatch, 326? I heard the Kennedy Center style voice call out. Go for 326, was my reply. Reports of suspicious vehicle, north parking lot, green pickup truck, no plate given dot and quat. I made my way through radiology and ultrasound to one of the maintenance doors that I knew led to the area. I get into the parking lot, and spot the vehicle. Looks to be occupied X2, and they look like rough characters. The vehicle looks like it's knocking on death's door, so that doesn't help. As I'm approaching the vehicle, the driver swings open his door and hops out with a full-size katana in his hand. He's also shirtless and I can clearly see Aryan Brotherhood tattoos on his chest. Also, he had a mullet. Y'all probably think I'm making this up, God if I could show you my body cam footage I would. I stop and instantly blade myself with my gun away from him. He stands near the truck, arguing with the female subject inside. 326, Central. Notify PD and have them respond. Mail with weapon in hand. 326, 330, signal 8 with me stat dot and quad. For those unfamiliar with the lingo, I just told dispatch to call the police, and told my partner to haul us out here with me. At this time I identified myself as hospital security, and began giving verbal commands for him to drop the weapon. Those commands were unsuccessful. Dispatch and my partner both acknowledged, and I keep eyes on the guy. At this point I'm looking for cover, because if he's holding a katana chances are he has more weaponry in the vehicle. I get behind a tree near the roadway, and begin to hear a siren in the distance. Thank Jesus, they're coming. My partner arrives and this exacerbates Mr. Ninja's attitude. I hear him yell various profanities and he begins raising the katana up and down aggressively while arguing with the female in the truck. I instinctively put the hood on my gun down. The sirens are getting louder, and so is our suspect. The PD cruiser whips around into the parking lot, and this sealed the deal for Mr. Ninja and his attitude. The female PD officer screeches her car right up between us and his truck, with her door facing us. Mr. Ninja begins to walk toward us. As soon as he starts stepping, I draw my gun and line him up. I scream at him to drop the sword, but he isn't having it. At this point he's two car lane lengths away. The PD officer steps around and yells taser 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 and I hear the sweet, sweet sound of 50,000 volts as the confetti flies out of her hand. Both probes make contact, and Mr. Ninja hits the ground. She and I run up to him, and I kick the sword toward my partner, who secures it in the front seat of the officer's Taurus. She cuffs him while I assist, all while he's spouting off racial slurs like you wouldn't believe. She and I were whiter than him, too. She thanks us for our assistance, gives her CAD case number, and after her partner arrives to assist her in searching him, they leave without a trace. Her partner also spoke to the female, and I guess she was sober enough to drive, because she left in the truck before they did. I had never had to draw my firearm on someone before. Not even in the several years I worked corrections and went armed on transports. Let me tell you, that gun is a lot heavier in your hands when you're in a situation like that. If she hadn't yelled taser, and he had kept approaching us in the aggressive manner he was, I would have shot him. At that point it's a matter of life or death.